है I don't know if you remember or not, but we made a video together called Four Worst Ways to Die. In the comments section, you left a bunch of ideas for other worst ways to die, so we stole some of them. Actually, that's not true. We took your ideas and paired it with our research and came up with five more worst ways to die. So prepare yourself. Starvation would be a pretty horrible way to die. One of the biggest reasons is because it would take so long. Humans have been known to last as long as 70 days without food, as long as they are properly hydrated. It's gonna be a really long 70 days though. Within about the first three or so days, your body's gonna eat up most of its fat reserves. And then for food, it's gonna turn to protein, which doesn't sound so bad until you realize that the protein it's consuming is your very muscles and organs. Your whole body's metabolic demands would shut down tremendously, especially with your brain, which would decrease its demand for glucose by three quarters. Sounds like a lot, and it is, which means you won't be doing any math problems toward the end of your starvation death. In the end, your immune system will likely go on the fritz and you'll die of one of two wasting diseases, marasmus or quashiocor. I'm gonna enjoy this all the more. A lot of you said that burning to death would be a pretty bad way to go, and you're right. Burning to death would melt your flesh and your organs, sear and cauterize your blood vessels, and plunge you into unimaginable pain. Luckily, most people who die from exposure to fire die from smoke inhalation, which is pretty bad in and of itself. Not only are you inhaling carbon monoxide, which replaces the oxygen in your bloodstream and suffocates you, it can also seep in through your skin and poison you. Plus, breathing in all those superheated gases can sear your lungs shut, which in and of itself would be a pretty horrible way to die. Another popular suggestion was beheading. And not just beheading, beheading with a dull knife. You sickos. The thing is, if you cut someone's head off with a dull knife, they would die of blood loss long before they died from, well, decapitation. That's because that knife would cut into your closed circulatory system, allowing the blood pressure to drop massively, meaning that blood couldn't pump any longer and perfuse your brain. You would lose consciousness and eventually die from that long before your head came off your body. But what about a guillotine? That actually goes in a different direction. The guillotine, which was invented to more humanely execute people, is so good at chopping off heads that recent research has found, in rodents thankfully, that a decapitated head taken off by a guillotine still shows signs of consciousness between 4 and 29 seconds after it's chopped off. And this is backed up by history. Anne Boleyn and King Charles I were both reported to have tried to speak after their head was removed. Neither of those two were killed by guillotine, of course, but a really sharp sword would do the same trick. This next one was suggested by Dark Forest Inc. in our comments on our last video, and it's called the Bamboo Torture. We couldn't find out for certain that it happened, but if it did, it's a pretty awful way to go. Supposedly, back in World War II, Japanese treated some of their POWs to this method of death by torture, where they would suspend the POW over a patch of fast-growing bamboo and sharpen the end of the bamboo so that when it grew up, it would puncture the person's abdomen and grow through their body and out the other side, leaving the person to linger before dying for several days in agony. Again, we haven't verified specifically that this did happen and isn't just an urban legend, but it's a pretty bad way to go either way. Now we reach the inevitable physics portion of the episode. While no one's ever actually directly measured or detected a black hole, most physicists agree that it does exist and that it represents matter 
compressed into such an infinite density that even light can't escape from it. If you were somehow to approach a black hole, say feet first, you would find that the force of gravity pulled on your feet and other parts of your body that were further away, like your head, differently. This would stretch you out in a process that Stephen Hawking calls spaghettification. Eventually, the differences in these pulls would stretch you apart at your weakest point, say probably above your hips, and the process would begin again. You, newly torn in half, would be spaghettified again, and then again, and again, and again, until you were sucked into the black hole as a bunch of discombobulated atoms. So that was it, nine horrible ways to die. Well, let's do one more, what should be our 10th? Let us know in the comments section below. And for more on this, go to How Stuff Works and check out the article, 10 Worst Ways to Die.